all welcome to another session of engineering graphics semester 2 my name is Raul Anar, assistant professor department of mechanical engineering Srinarayana Institute of Technology Adur. welcome all Hello students uh, we are going to deal with the revision classes of module 5 uh, we are going to study the important topics from perspective projections, uh, basic concepts and all. Perspective views is just another way of representing the objects in a drawing. Uh, it is most commonly used as a creative art in architectural drawings or in technical sketching, but it is uh, very rarely used in technical drawing. The basic difference between the perspective projections and the other type of projections which we have done so far in this course like orthographic projection and isometric projection, the basic difference in the two is that in this case the objects are made in a more real way having an element of realism in, in the drawing. Uh, for example, if you are looking at an object in real life, you are standing close to an object, the part of the object which is closer to you looks bigger in size as compared to that part of object which is far away from the observer. So that part of the object which is away from you appears smaller in size, relatively smaller in size, whereas the part of the object which is closer to the observer that appears relatively bigger. So that kind of an realism uh, element is introduced in the perspective projection and these kind of uh, projections are primarily used for making architectural drawings and technical sketch. Now this slide shows a typical example of perspective projections. This, this slide shows a picture of a uh, railway bogey. Now in this case we can see that the part of the bogey which is closer to the observer appears bigger. The, you can look at the windows or even the height of the bogey. The, the part of the bogey which is closer to the observer and the windows which are closer to the observer they appear to be bigger in size as compared to the windows or the height which is away from the user like in like at this end another example is that of a railway track if you're standing somewhere here in uh, on the railway track the width between the two tracks is relatively large but if you look at the same track at uh, some at some distance then you can see that the distance between the two tracks is is reducing gradually and finally at at one point you will see that the two tracks will ultimately merge with one another and that point at which the two tracks appear to merge that point is called the vanishing point this slide shows typical difference between a parallel projection and a perspective projection now in this case we can see that all the three directions the width the height and the depth the edges along all these three different directions of an object they are they are parallel to each other so the lines uh, representing these edges are parallel to each other whereas in case of perspective projection uh, however you can see in this case the horizontal lines the the width lines and the height lines they are parallel to each other but the edges representing the depth of the object they are non-parallel to each other and thus they appear to merge at one distant point which is which in this case will be called as a vanishing point so in this case the object is presented in such a way that out of three directions one direction edges they are appearing to merge at one point so this is called as one point perspective projection system later we will also see different examples where you will see that even the edges along the width direction that is horizontal direction they are also not parallel to each other so in that case those non-parallel edges will give rise to another vanishing point so that will be called as two point perspective system and later you will see another case in which even the vertical edges in case of a perspective projection are non-parallel to each other so that will give you three point perspective projection system so this property of the perspective projections gives the element of realism in the in the drawing as you can see in this case 
the height of the object the face of uh, the height of this face which is closer to the observer appears to be larger as compared to height of this edge here at the rear face which is far away from the observer so this gives just an element of realism that the closer face is bigger in size as compared to the face which is away from the user uh, from the observer that is smaller in size this slide shows the comparison of an isometric drawing or a, or a diametric or a trimetric drawing vis-a-vis -a, -vis a perspective drawing now in this case you can see uh, whether it is isometric or diametric or trimetric drawing the edges along the three directions that is the width the height and the depth the edges along all these three directions are parallel in all these three cases whereas in case of perspective projection in this case you can see though the vertical edges are parallel to each other they will not these edges will never meet at any point but the edges along say the depth direction the edges along the width direction they are non-parallel and when projected these edges will meet somewhere on this side at this point which is called as rvp that is the right vanishing point and these edges when extended will meet at this point which is called as the lvp that is the left vanishing point now let us start with the main elements that are used in perspective drawing system uh, before we go any further, uh, I just want to highlight this that the terminology that we learned in the chapter on orthographic projections like we learned about different types of projection planes, uh, the three elements, the observer, object and plane and we also learned there that observer is assumed to be standing at infinite distance and the rays of light, the projectors, they are parallel to each other. So all those fundamentals that we learned in the orthographic projection chapter, they need to be uh, kept aside while we are doing the perspective system. As, as has already been discussed in the previous slides, that uh, the parallel projection system and perspective projection systems, they are quite different from each other. So please don't confuse uh, whatever terms we are going to use in this chapter with the terms that we used earlier in the orthographic topic. Uh, so there are four uh, main elements uh, that are uh, that are listed on the slide. The, uh, there is an observer in this case, like the observer we had even in case of uh, orthographic projections. There is an observer in perspective as well. There is an object. There is a plane of projection. Then there is a line of sight. Now this slide shows the arrangement of different elements uh, when we are talking about the perspective projections. I would like to recommend that you should always keep this picture in mind while you are handling any problem on perspective projections. Now the key elements uh, that are that, or the key terms that we'll be using in the perspective projection in, include uh, there is a ground plane. This is just like a horizontal plane that we discussed in case of orthographic projections. So this is a ground plane and there is an observer. The observer has a certain height. So uh, the observer is uh, standing on the ground. So the point where the observer is standing on the ground, that point is called as the station point. Now this is uh, one important term that you should understand because you will invariably be given some data about the station point in all the problems that you'll be doing. The, the next important thing is the height of the observer. So in this case, the height of the observer is the distance between the feet and the eye level. So that is the height of the observer. Then we just assume that there is another plane which is passing through the eye level of the observer. This plane is uh, called as a hori hori uh, horizontal plane. So you have a ground plane, you have a horizontal plane. The ground plane is a, is a plane that passes through the feet level of the observer. The horizontal plane is a plane that passes through the eye level of the observer. Then there is a, a vertical plane which is called as picture plane in this case. This is also a very important term to be used. This is called the picture plane. Now this plane is a vertical plane and this vertical plane actually meets the two horizontal planes that is the ground plane as well as the horizontal plane. The line of intersection of this vertical plane with the ground 
is called the ground line similarly the line of intersection of picture plane the vertical plane with the horizontal plane is called the horizon so these are the important terms that one should keep in mind there is a ground there is a station point there is an eye there is a uh, horizontal plane there is a picture plane and there is a horizon there is a ground line and uh, the direction of viewing of the observer is called the vision axis and wherever uh, this direction of viewing of the observer meets the horizon that point is called the center of vision and later it will be also called as the vanishing point so these are the important terms and please try to remember this picture this figure always in your mind always relate this figure with the given data whenever you are solving any problem on perspective uh, uh, drawing another important thing is unlike orthographic projection system the observer will always be standing at a finite distance from the picture plane uh, so this distance will be finite distance and it will be given to you in the statement in the problem statement this distance of the observer from the picture plane will will be mentioned or if it is not mentioned then there will be an empirical relation that we will discuss later that can be used to determine this finite distance the lastly <clears throat> the role of the picture plane in perspective drawing is to uh, to uh, um, to obtain the projection of the the perspective projection of the object so whenever we say that we are going to make the perspective projection of an object so that perspective projection will be obtained on this picture plane here so that will be obtained on the picture plane and one more very important point in the perspective projections is that there is no quadrant system as in case of orthographic projection so please don't confuse the orthographic projection system with the perspective projection system as i told you earlier there is no quadrant system in this case there is no quadrants in this case so the observer will always be standing on one side and the picture plane will be uh, used to capture the projection and the object in this case will always be placed on the rear side of the picture plane that is on this side of the picture plane that that will always be the case there will be a picture plane on one side of the picture plane the observer will be standing at a certain distance that will be specified finite distance and the object will always be placed on the other side of the picture plane so from the concept point of view you can just understand that picture plane is an infinite size transparent sheet and the main purpose of the only purpose of picture plane is to capture the perspective projection of the given object so it is an infinite sized uh, vertical transparent sheet now all the terms that we used that we discussed on this slide are again summed up on this uh, slide the ground plane picture plane horizontal plane station point ground line vision axis vanishing point and horizon now just for your understanding this slide uh, basically shows the, the the frame that you see here this is the frame this frame is basically this rectangular frame here basically indicates the picture plane and the object in this case is this scene that you see here these rows of uh, poles here and these artifacts in the middle so this entire scene is on the other side of this rectangular frame which is the picture plane and the observer is standing on this side somewhere here at some finite distance so this is how this scene will appear to this observer who is standing at some finite distance from the picture plane now in this case the important thing to see is that all the poles which are vertical they are parallel to each other so they were so these edges will never meet each other uh, you can also see these uh, horizontal lines they are also parallel to each other so they will also never meet each other however the lines which are indicating the depth of the scene that is these lines 
when extended these are non parallel lines so when extended all these lines even the tips of these poles when extended will uh, will finally merge at this point so this point is the vanishing point in this case so this is a drawing which is having only one vanishing point since all horizontal lines are horizontal vertical lines are vertical only the lines which are indicating the depth of the scene they are non parallel so they are only yielding one vanishing point so this is called the one vanishing point perspective system so uh, this slide shows the two factors that affect how the perspective view will look like so the two factors which are responsible for the appearance of a perspective view are uh, the distance between the observer and the object and uh, the second factor is the orientation of the object how the object is placed with respect to the picture plane the vertical plane we discussed in the last slide so these are the two important factors that decide how the perspective projection will look like now depending upon the relative positioning of the horizon line and the ground line the perspective views can be classified into three types uh, please keep this picture in mind that uh, the ground line is the line which represents the plane that is the ground plane passing through the feet of the observer and the horizon line is representing the plane that is passing through the eye level of the observer so uh, in this case the ground line is uh, is at the bottom side and this object is placed uh, is just on the is placed just on the ground and this line here represents the eye level so it means the eyes of the observer are at this level and the feet of the observer are at this level so this is just showing uh, the three different uh, uh, views of the same object so in this case you can see uh, this front face of the object is is common in all the three views you can see but in this view you can see the left face of the object uh, and you can also see the top face of the object the reason being the eye level of the observer is at a higher level and in this case the in the second case in the middle case you can see the no side face of the object is available though you can see the front face this face and you can also see the top face and so it means the observer is completely aligned with this object when this object is being viewed in the third option you can see the front face is again uh, completely available the top face is also available because of the height of the observer and the right face of the object is available in this case because the observer is, observer is standing on slightly on the right side now this is a second case in which uh, the eye level and the ground line they are at the same level so in this case you can see uh, the same object you can see the front face you can see the left face but the top face like in this case in this case the top face is not available because the eye level of the observer and the feet level they are at the same position similarly in this case you can see no sideways or no side faces are available in this case you can see the front face is available the right face is available but the top face is not available the third case is when the feet level is here the horizon level is on the lower side so it means the eye level is even below the feet level so in this case you can see you can see the front face like in the other two options here and here you can see the left face and in this case you will also see the bottom uh, details of the object in this case again you can see the front face the bottom faces no left or right faces whereas in this case you can see the front face you can see the right face you can again see the bottom details so in this case you can't see the top face you can see the bottom faces in this case you can't see the bottom or the top in this case you will only only be able to see the top face no bottom details so uh, 
this type of perspective view is called the aerial view when the eye level is at a higher position as compared to the ground level uh, this is called the normal view and this is called the worms view so in this case the eye level is at a lower level as compared to the ground line there is yet another type of classification of perspective views uh, depending upon how many vanishing points are there so depending upon the vanishing points there can be three uh, different types of perspective views the one point perspective the two point perspective and the three point perspective or the oblique projection views so in case of one point perspective uh, one vanishing point perspective uh, views you can see uh, out of the three directions the width the height and the depth uh, only one direction edges they are non parallel and they tend to meet at one distant point which is called as a vanishing point vp1 here in this case so you can see the vertical lines are parallel 1 4 and 6 7 are pa parallel the horizontal horizontal lines are also parallel but the lines along the depth direction are non parallel similarly in the second case you can see uh, only the vertical edges are parallel uh, but the lines along the the depth and along the width direction they are non parallel so in this case there will be two vanishing points as you can see vp1 vanishing point 1 and vanishing point 2 similarly in in um, case of three vanishing point perspective uh, um, projection system all the three direction edges they are non parallel to each other so when projected these uh, edges along the three directions they will uh, yield three vanishing points that is vp1 vp2 and vp3 so this is just an example of uh, one point perspective uh, view in this case uh, we can see the vertical edges are parallel to each other uh, the horizontal the horizontal edges here they are also parallel to each other but the edges which are along the depth direction of the street they are non parallel and they appear to meet at one particular uh, at one particular point that is a one vanishing point so uh, that's the one vanishing point here in this case this is yet another example on one point perspective where uh, this chair uh, has got all the vertical and the horizontal edges parallel to each other whereas uh, the edges along this direction are non parallel and they tend to meet at this point which is a vanishing point uh, for the for this view similarly this is uh, in this case also the horizontal and the vertical edges are parallel whereas the edges along the depth direction they tend to meet at this vanishing point uh, there's but there's one difference between these two views that in this case the left face of the chair is available because uh, the observer is standing on slightly on the left side so that the left face of the chair is available uh, in this case the observer is standing right in uh, alignment of this chair so neither the left or the right uh, none of the two faces are available however in both the cases the eye level of the observer is uh, is at a much uh, higher level so the top seat the, the, the top face of this chair is available in both the views so it means that indicates that the eye level of the observer is at much higher level uh, then this is another example on a two point perspective uh, scene so basically in this case we can see the vertical edges the these pillars they are parallel to each other whereas these edges are when, when these edges are extended then these edges are non parallel to each other so if we put the lines along these sides then we can see that we will get one vanishing point somewhere on this sides and the second vanishing point somewhere on this side whereas the vertical lines they are non parallel uh, the same <coughs> example of chair can also be seen in this case we can see the chair has got all the vertical edges parallel so there is no vanishing point along the vertical side however these edges on this side when extended will meet here that is vp1 the edges on this side of the chair when extended will meet on this side that is vp2 uh, then this is a third case when uh, the scene has got three uh, points uh, three vanishing points so in this case the even the vertical edges are non parallel so when extended these vertical edges will also meet at one point uh, the edges along this direction along this direction they are also uh, non parallel and they will meet somewhere here on this side. The
the edges along the third direction that is this direction they are also non parallel and they will meet somewhere on this side so when we put these lines on top of this scene then we can see uh, the the extended lines will will yield one vanishing point on this side one vanishing point on this side and there will be one vanishing point on this side also uh, so the same can also be uh, described by using the same example of chair so in this case you can see there are three vanishing point because the edges along the three directions the width height and the depth they are non parallel and they, they 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 tend to meet at certain points the three vanishing points so this this video was all about the brief discussion on uh, what are perspective projections uh, what are the key terms that are used now we will have a look at uh, two examples uh, wherein we will be making use of autocad to make the one point and two point perspective projections for simple objects thank you for watching the video